Yeah. No. So don't unsend anything that you think is going to get deleted. I don't believe you. Um, jailbreak it. You'll do it. So. But they can't say that. No, they can't. I'll tell you guys later. There you go. There you go. No. So here we have. We have g of x equals 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 17x plus 6. All right? Um, so what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be in your new part stage. We're going to want to write down. And I'm going to do, what we're going to be working on is trying to find the zeros. Now, before, what I said was, when, I, when we wanted to find all the zeros, we had to work on to factoring this, right? Or somehow solving it. But when you guys look at this, this, might, this is going to be kind of difficult to try to see if we can factor it, right? It's not quadratic. We can't use the quadratic formula. We can't complete the square. So what else are we going to do? Well, one thing we could do is, remember, if we wrote it all as your factors, we could go ahead and um, we could write it as a list of all factors. And we could go from our factors, we could find our zeros. But here we're kind of presenting a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one way how to list all of the possible rational zeros. We don't know what the zeros are. But what we're going to do is what we call the rational zero test. Okay? And what the rational zero test tells us is all of the possible zeros, possible rational zeros, can be listed by the factors of p over q plus or minus. So you might say, what the heck is p over q? And what again, remember rational zeros, right? Remember when we were, fact, when we were finding the zeros of a polynomial, we had rational, we had irrational, we had imaginary, right? We had all these different types of zeros. So if I just want to find what are the rational zeros, all of the possible rational zeros can be in the form of their factors of p over q. So what is your p and what's your q? Well, p, q. All right. So now let's go and take a look at what are all the factors of 6. So we have plus or minus 6, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 1. Right? Then, what are all the possible factors of 3? Well, plus or minus 3, comma, plus or minus 1. Does everybody kind of see what I did there? So that means it, I took the factors of 6 and wrote all of them up top. And I took the factors of 3 and I wrote them in their denominator. And what the rational zero tel test tells us, if there is a rational zero, it is going to be one of these numbers. But you might say, I don't see where you're getting your numbers, because it just looks like you wrote a whole bunch of stuff over a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's go and actually write them out. Plus or minus p over q. So you could do plus or minus 6 over 3, right? Plus or minus 6 over 1. It could be plus or minus 3 over 3, comma, plus or minus 3 over 1 plus or minus 2 over 3, plus or minus 2 over 1, comma, plus or minus 1 over 3, comma, plus or minus 1 over 1. So you guys see how now what I did is I took each numerator and I divided by each denominator. Now we do have some um, repeated answers. So let's go and eliminate these. And let's simplify them first of all. So 6 divided by 3, we know is plus or minus 2, right? Is there any other numbers that represent plus or minus 2? Yeah, that's 2 over 1, right? So we can just kind of eliminate that answer because it's, it's repeated. Let's go to the next one, plus or minus 6. Good, we got that one. Is there any other number that represents 6? No. Here, this one, plus or minus 3 divided by 3, that's plus or minus 1. Do we have another answer that's repeated? Yeah, we have 1 over 1 here. So we can just cancel that out. Then we have plus or minus 3. And we have plus or minus 2 thirds and plus or minus 1 third. So all this is telling us, all this is telling us is that if we have a rational number, if we have a rational number as a 0, it has to be one of these values. OK? That's it. That's all you guys got to know for that.